Last but not least, Kevin McDonough. After 27 years, Kevin McDonough recently retired from the city of Lockport, Department of Community Development. His principal duties included guiding first-time home buyers through the process of purchasing a house and assisting income-eligible uh, income homeowners in the rehabilitation of their properties. Over the last dozen years, his responsibilities expanded as he became a city representative to several organizations and boards. As a founding member of both Lockport Main Street, Inc. and the Lockport Historic Preservation Commission, his focus has been on urban planning, historic preservation, and land use in the city core. McDonough is a graduate of SUNY Oswego and later attended Eastern Michigan University for a master's in historic preservation. Please join me in welcoming our last speaker, Kevin. Thank you, Greg. The story I'm gonna to tell tonight focuses on nine buildings, as, and we're going. To, the story itself is going to be very simple and short on the first eight. Here we have our Lady of Lords at Main and Best, uh, Annunciation at uh, Lafayette and Grant, St. Mary's of Medina, and uh, parts of the former Church of Mecca Conception at Edward and Elmwood. Next, we have this uh, American Foursquare on steroids that was built of Gouverneur Marble in 1908 has an elevator to the third floor, which is where the doctor who resided there had his offices, and this much more modest four-square pretending to be a craftsman bungalow on the right, which has been my home for the last 30 years. Next, we have two buildings that are also related, similar to the story, but not quite the same. The one on the left, you might be, on your left, you might be familiar with, is the Unitarian Universalist Church at Elmwood and West Ferry, and the Edward Dean Adams um, Power Station, a remnant of four major buildings in Niagara Falls on Buffalo Avenue. What they have in common is the general contractor was Martin McDonough, my great-grandfather, though he worked as a subcontractor on the last two buildings. Also seen here 99 years ago this Monday at my grandparents' wedding day. Uh, in business from approximately 1888 to about 1910 or so, I really don't know what the changes were. Probably that transition from masonry to steel just didn't happen. But in our hearts, in the family, the jewel is this, the New York Central Railroad Station in Lockport, better known today as Union Station, and as it appeared upon completion in 1888. It was his small company's first big job. He was only the subcontractor, but as we like to say, he was responsible for this the only thing that's still left after a devastating fire in 1974. This was taken in uh, 19, on 2015 um, on a cleanup day that was in preparation for a photo you'll see towards the end. What I'd like to talk about as these slides progress is really the potential for this site. Um, the chimney is in remarkably good condition. Uh, we all have pooled our resources over the years coming up with ideas as to what can be done with it. Uh, should it just be stabilized as an art center, uh, something in community events oriented. Um, but this, you know, very, very Romanesque Victorian era structure. Uh, the windows, when you're inside, as I think we'll get to in a moment, even now in ruins as the sun comes in from the south and you see on the inside. My own memories of this are sitting at a table at dinner with my parents and grandparents in 1970, just by the fireplace, and my grandfather commenting, that clock on the mantle didn't work 70 years ago, and it doesn't work today. <laughs> but as you can see on the inside, even now, the light coming in through those, imagine them with windows in an enclosed space, even if it was still something of a ruin, but reflecting off a polished floor and, and real glass back in the monuments. This is taking longer than I thought. <laughs> Again, this was on the cleanup day. One of my favorite features is these three arches. Uh, what a welcoming promenade they could be in some even minor restoration. Uh, again, we're at a point, 43 years after the fire, where no one ever expects this to be completely restored. If somebody could do that, wonderful. But what we really expect is that we would just make this a welcoming space one day in what is a fairly rapidly reviving old canal town, which we'll get to in a moment as to why I think this hasn't already happened. Um, you have to be in it to appreciate it. My own first experience back in 1988, when the building, the only time was really threatened with demolition, and a bunch of us got together, we protested the owner to his credit, who wanted the stone for his new built house, said, you know what, you find a new owner, I'll sell it. And I walked inside, and the first thing I noticed was the composition of the mortar joints was almost identical to those on my house. 
So there's that connection. It may have just been a common water usage for 1888 and 1921, but still it gives, gives you that connection. And as you can see here, it can still happen. Um, the property remains fairly secure. It is again on the market. Uh, $300,000 they want for the site. It is a fairly valuable site, so you can understand that even if what you're getting is a ruin. It has been on the National Register of Historic Places since 1977, interestingly enough, three years after it was gutted by fire. But I think the problem, this was what we were preparing for, was a night lighting event that went on for about a week back in 2015, just to emphasize the architectural beauty and detail of the structure. But as we move forward, I think the problem in Lockport is that it's a small community that, in a different small community, this would have happened a long time ago. But we have an 800 pound gorilla in the room. And there's only just so many people to help. And those people have been focused for the better part of the last 25 years on this. The restoration of the Flight of Five. The first set of gates are in. It's about two million bucks a lock. They're moving forward. Hopefully by 2026, all five will be restored running, operating, and that's where the community activists have been focused for about a quarter of a century, and it is happening. But there's just so many bodies to go long around, and that's why I'm convinced why Union Station remains in ruins. That being said, Union Station in winter, it's beautiful any time of the year, but I think the snow highlights it beautifully. National Register, tax credits, if there's, if there's a deep pocket developer sympathetic out there, please step forward because the community will step in. We need help. Thank you.